Hi, my name is Tom Kamita. I'm an interdisciplinary artist uh, working with books and performance and video. Uh, since I've been at the Bemis, I've been working, I made a video and a very short book, but I've worked um, mostly on one long book that involved collecting about 1,500 pages of nature descriptions from other novels. And since I've been here, I've cut up all that language and put them into categories and I've been organizing these fragments into one solid nature novel. Hi, my name is Anna Garner, and I live and work between Los Angeles and Tucson, Arizona. I work mostly with performances for video, as well as working with sculpture, occasionally live performance, um, and installation. The work that I've been doing here at Bemis centers around spaces of uncertainty and looking for actions, situations, objects that situate themselves in, in an arena where things, certain parts are controllable, certain parts are uncontrollable, so looking for um, something that exists in between what can and cannot be controlled. Um, and then my work also often references physical comedy or slapstick comedy in some manner. The main project I've been working on is actually, you can see right behind me, um, is the remnants of a performance that I did. So I built this structure specifically for the performance and then um, created it for video. And the piece will live uh, primarily as a video rather than um, the physical object that I built as well. It's, it's a continuation of work that I've been doing in this studio for the past two to three years where I've been looking at um, ideas of controllability in the body and primarily putting the body in situations where it's um, in some ways at risk but then at some ways managing that risk where it, it exists in these places of uncertainty. Well yeah, one of the things that really interests me about your performance practice is that it's all filmed. Mm -hmm. And of course there's also this element where you start out as a photographer and then these are kind of static frame dynamic photographs kind of. Mm -hmm. I mean moving pictures. Yeah, I, I do tend to approach performance in a way that I feel highlights my um, my past with photography because my my bachelor's degree was in photography, my master's degree was in photography, and it was really the only medium I worked with for a very long time. So I do tend to approach all of my performances um, being for video. There's always a static frame. Uh, the way that I use lighting, I think, stems from the way that I used lighting when I worked with photography. Yeah, since I've been at the Bemis, I've been working on a long book project that actually I've been imagining since about 2012. Um, I was inspired by a video by a Bay Area artist, Koto Ozawa. He took ma um, nature from feature-length films and collaged them together into one rotoscoped animation. So like the mountains of Brokeback Mountain cuts the mountains of some other movie. And then the rivers of Deliverance cuts the rivers of Fitzcarraldo, which cuts the rivers of Anaconda, which floated the Sea of Jaws, and so on. Yeah, over the past year, I collected about 1,500 pages of nature descriptions from about 100 novels. And when I got here, I printed it all out, cut it all up into categories, like there's forest language, there's ocean language, there's very gloomy, stormy, or just overcast language. And I've kind of been creating these, um, this macro supercut of nature language, but then these micro supercuts of, you know, there's a, a summer chapter, there's a uh, spring chapter where the bulk of it is just rain for days. There's a desert chapter, there's an ocean chapter with an island. Well, yeah, it's been especially interesting to have the time here to work on it because I thought I understood the book until about a month into here when I realized that actually one of the most interesting things was the fact that it's really just a big mood collage because based on the weather or the climate, um, moods drastically change. For some reason, whenever the clouds arise, 99% of the time it gets very negative very quickly. So. 
Somebody at Open Studio has brought up how the book is kind of like data analysis also. I would say the past year and a half, um, I've been working more with sculpture than with performance or video. And I used the time at Bemis specifically to start thinking through how to bridge those together, to, how to think about using the way that I was working with sculpture and bring it into the way that I had have also been working in performance and video. The sets have been very minimal. I've mostly used kind of like a clean sweep backdrop um, of different colors. So this is really the first time I, where I've, you know, spent a long time working through the construction of a set, of a structure, uh, of something that is a little more sculptural um, that the performance will exist within. How much ground to ground? How much ground to ground? How much draft do you have to do? How much pot to pot to pot? So I also have a performance practice, um, which began primarily with me as a poet. Uh, when I started out seven years ago, I was operating mostly as a poet and thought that my job was to really get to know the medium in the same way that a painter might learn how to paint. So in painting, I assume that you learn the, the paint itself, how to maybe make the paint, how to stretch canvas, what different kinds of ways you can hold the canvas. And with language, it seemed that image and sound, but also reading technologies, were like the basic building blocks of that material. It all kind of started out with uh, large-scale uh, guerrilla operas, um, but also it involves solo performance where I, uh, at one point I collaged tongue twisters together into a 15 minute sound poem. So do you see the, um, your performances using these tongue twisters as a type of physical endurance um, or physical challenge? At the level of live performance, I mean, I guess I'm interested in sometimes pushing my body to the extreme where it might actually like fall apart when you do tongue twisters, you know, you never know what's going to happen one second later. Um, though you do train your mouth to get there. Well, for me, the way that humor started to, humor or comedy started to intentionally come into my work is that I noticed um, people laughed a lot in response to my videos. And it was never necessarily my intention to make something that was overtly funny. Um, but as, as Tom and I were actually talking about the other day when we were doing some studio visits, um, that, because there were some questions about, well, I don't really see what's funny about, about my work. Like people were asking, like, how, how do I see my work as funny? And one of the things that Tom brought up was just that, you know, humor is so much about tension. It's about that build up and release of tension and um, finding those moments that, that release that tension. One of the great things about it, I think, is that there's so many different kinds of humor. Um, so when we were talking the other day about Anna's work, and I said, I laugh during it, you know, uh, I feel like humor gets um, seen as this really lowbrow thing that we attach to comedies, but is really this expulsion yeah, of this tension. Um, so I see it, it's a, kind of like a bad idea too, especially like in a highbrow art context. Of course, obviously there are many humorous artists, but I do feel like there's a kind of seriousness that resists humor. Um, and that's unfortunate because also humor and bad ideas lead to some beautiful moments. <laughs>